Hey everybody, Will Martin here. Got a crazy one for you today. New California law raises minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 per hour among the nation's highest. Here in New York State, I think it's $15 an hour, but we've got plenty of fast food workers that are making 20 bucks an hour. My daughter works at Dunkin' Donuts and she's making, I think, $18.50 an hour right now. What's sad about that is that, let's take a look uh, in California again, we're going to see minimum wage rise for fast food workers to 20 bucks an hour in California. So in California, according to Indeed.com, 1816 an hour is the average base salary for a home care aide in California, which actually seemed a little high to me. So consulted another website here. This is from uh, California Healthcare Foundation. This is... Uh, from 2021, and the median hourly wage for a home health aide is $14.27 an hour. Now, how are you going to recruit and retain people to come take care of not only your mom or dad, but you if and when you need home health care? Because let's face it, at some point, we're all going to need something. I mean, unless you plan on dying early, you're going to need home health care. If you don't already, you may already be in that boat. You, you may actually have insight into this where you could share it with me and with others. But, you know, it what it shows me is how little our states and our country as a whole value, uh, not just the elderly population, because again, it, Home health care, nursing home care, all of that is not necessarily all uh, for elderly people. I mean, it can be for anybody. It can be for, for you tomorrow. If, God forbid, you get in a car accident and you're paralyzed and you can't take care of yourself. So this could be you. This could be me. This could be any one of us at any time requiring home health care. And yet we're finding it more valuable to pay people that work at Dunkin Donuts nearly 20 bucks an hour or in California they're I mean they're going to start at 20 bucks an hour and then they're going to go up from there and yet you have a home care aide making an average of 14.27 an hour so it shows you where the values are it shows you how little the country or the government I should say in particular values uh, our elderly, our infirm, and people that are in need. And I guess what we value more are those corporations that own the fast food enterprises that some of us frequent from time to time. Tell me what your thoughts are on this. I'd love to hear it. Okay, the next issue is the U.S. suffering the healthcare worker shortage, something that we talk about, we hear about all the time. It's good to go over the numbers again every once in a while, I guess, just to kind of remind yourself of where we're at. Uh, shortages are expected to be in the neighborhood of 200,000 nurses and 124,000 physicians by the early 2030s, so within 10 years. Reasons for that, aging population, certainly an aging nursing population. The average age of a registered nurse right now is supposed to be 52. I think that's probably pretty accurate because a lot of nurses entered the profession in the late 80s, early 90s, and at that time, a lot of schools were offering free tuition, my school as well. It's the only reason that I became a nurse was because uh, it was free tuition. Uh, they don't offer that anymore, not, not any place that I know about. If, if it does somewhere uh, else in the country, let me know because I'm, I'm curious to hear about that. Uh, a lot of uh, nurses uh, and healthcare providers uh, apparently left because of quote unquote burnout, whatever that means. And I, I think that means different things to different people. But in general, I think a lot of people found a reason to leave or found a reason to go somewhere else, or in particular found a reason to stay out of hospital practice and maybe do something outside the hospital, which certainly makes sense to me from a quality of life standpoint. I think a lot of people uh, are better off being outside the hospital. Now, the number of licensed 
physicians over the past decade has risen by 20%, according to statistics. But even though that's apparently true, we're still going to see a shortage of 124,000 physicians. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious uh, that that's happening in places like the emergency department. The number of residencies that went unfilled this past year during the match was significant. Never happened before like that. Numbers were never, never that high before. So a lot of people are deciding not to go into emergency medicine, for example. And we already know that a lot of people don't go into primary care. And I think that's probably the biggest weak link in our healthcare system is the lack of primary care right now. Reports are saying that one in five healthcare workers quit work during the pandemic. Uh, probably true that one in five left be during the pandemic. How many of those left because they weren't getting, going to get a vaccine? I know of quite a few who refused to get a vaccine. And now that this is all said and done, I don't think they've been offered their job back either. But I'm sure that they're happy or whatever it is that they're doing right now. Okay, so another interesting thing here, uh, Vassar nurses, this is in New York State, Vassar nurses protest job cuts that could begin as early as next week. Uh, the story behind this is that there were 14 nursing positions that were being reassigned within the hospital. Uh, they're not being cut, they're not being fired, but they're being reassigned. Several of these nurses apparently worked in uh, the IV team. And apparently the IV team is just being eliminated and those nurses are going to be assigned somewhere else in the hospital. For anybody that's worked as a nurse at the bedside, uh, anywhere, in the emergency department, on a floor, anywhere, you, you realize that putting an IV in somebody can be a really quick procedure sometimes, and sometimes it can take forever. And particularly when you have somebody that's a really tough stick and you're spending 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour uh, trying to get an IV in somebody, and that's time that could be spent taking care of other people, answering call bells, taking care of other emergencies, and you could hand that off to somebody that could just simply work on the IV, somebody that maybe just does that all the time, and that's what these IV teams do. They Pretty much that's all they do is they just put in IVs. Maybe they might put in pick lines also, but you know they're taking care of all of the difficult IV sticks, it's like anything, if you do it all the time, you become really, really good at it. If you're a bedside nurse and you're putting in an IV maybe once a week, you're not going to be quite as skilled at it. Um, so getting rid of IV teams really is just going to, I don't know, it's just going to uh, lengthen the stay of patients because there's going to be more time wasted. Uh, and, and it accumulates. I mean, if you're talking 15 or 20 minutes of extra time with one patient, multiply that by eight or 10 or 12 patients uh, that you might take care of through the day. And that's a lot of time spent uh, trying to get an IV in somebody. Here's a great opportunity. If you like the beach, you can go to Hilton Head in South Carolina, Hilton Head Island. They're offering worker housing to attract nurses, apparently a, a condominium uh, right there on the island. Uh, it sounds like a nice one too, is gonna offer free housing to nurses and other healthcare staff. Uh, to work in the hospital. Wouldn't be a big gig, you know, to do that for short term. So those of you that are thinking about doing something different for a little while and you want to get down to South Carolina, still nice and warm down there, it could be a good opportunity maybe to pick up a little extra money and enjoy the beach. Okay, and finally, we'll wrap it up with something completely different here. Nurses compare Hoka shoes to walking on a cloud even after standing all day. All right, tell me. For those of you that are wearing hokas, what do you think? Do you like them or not like them? I kind of bought into the hype back a, a year or two ago and I bought a pair and I hated them. <laughs> I liked them in the store before I bought them and then I hated them after I got home. They were just too thick and too squishy and too unstable. And I couldn't wear them in the gym either for the same reason. And I know that some people run in them, but I don't know, the ones that I have, they're just crazy. So they're just kind of sitting there. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Probably sell them, give them away, do something or other. I don't know. But um, Hoka's are definitely not for me. I don't know about you guys. There is a pair of sneaker that I just came across. I went to Fleet Feet, which is a uh, shoe outlet 
kind of near me. I think it's national now. I think they're all over the place. Uh, but it's a shoe brand called Ultra, A-L-T-R-A. They're, they're like wider in front and they're lower in their heel. They're not like as thick. And I'll tell you, um, I've worn them now three, four times in the emergency department. I mean, they're great uh, for me. I know it's just like anything else. What works for one person doesn't work for another. But um, instead of talking about nursing shortages, we'll talk about uh, sneakers every once in a while. So, all right, I think that's it for now. If you uh, found any of this content interesting at all, Please leave it a like and uh, please leave a comment too. I want to hear what you think about any of these stories and I'll talk to you again on the next video. Thanks. Bye.